Welcome back everyone. Thank you for tuning into my channel. Sorry I haven't made any videos lately. Uh, the weather has not been cooperating and when it does I'm usually busy working. Um, we'll talk about that in just a minute because there's something I want to say about this uh, bike. But this video today is going to be about uh, the one year ownership even though it's a little bit more than a year. It's uh, going on a year and a half now actually. I've been meaning to make this video but I just been really busy this spring so just haven't got around to it but um what i want to talk about is the good the bad and the ugly on owning this bike and i want everyone to hear what it's like uh coming from an everyday person not one of these uh moto journalists because you know those guys they take it out on the racetrack they uh you know say really high-tech stuff that to the average person that just rides on a daily basis or rides this thing on the street um, you know, it doesn't really relate because this bike on the track uh, is going to be excellent. That's what it's built for. That's what it's designed to do. But how's it like owning it and riding it on the street? Uh, I have not taken this on the racetrack and I'm probably not going to. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. But um, yeah, so let's, um, let's first of all talk about the good stuff. Uh, there are a few bad things. Uh, so if you're thinking about buying this bike, stay tuned. Um, and pay attention because I'll point out some things that may or may not be a deal breaker for you But let's talk about the good things first. First of all uh, the power. Uh, it's absolutely amazing The electronics on this is absolutely amazing. And by the way, I will make a video on the electronic suspension here pretty soon um, But anyway, uh, that bike handles phenomenally. It's an awesome machine um, I can't say enough about it. It's it's perfect um, this is the fastest and most technologically advanced uh, sport bike I've ever owned in my life. And I've had numerous sport bikes from R1s to uh, CBRs. Uh, so this is by far the most powerful and most technologically advanced bike I've ever had. Uh, at the same time, it brings the most fun factor. Um, like uh, they say, the smiles per gallon on this thing is, is phenomenal. Um, anything else really good? Um, well, everything really. Um, even the insurance is, believe it or not, is not as expensive as an R1. You would think it would be, uh, but it's not. It's actually pretty cheap uh, for what it is. Um, compared to a CBR1000 uh, or a Panigale or a uh, R1, which was the bikes in running when I was looking to buy one, um, this actually was the cheapest on insurance, believe it or not. Um, you know, the sound of that V4 engine, uh, that V4 is just an amazing machine and the sound that it puts out is just, you can't even put it into words, you just have to listen to it. If you've never heard one in person, you, you just have to listen to it. And in fact, one of the guys uh, I rode with last year, he actually pulled up next to me at the light and told me that my bike even idles aggressively. And I had to say thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's get on with the bad stuff because obviously the machine is great. Um, there are a few bad things. Um, so the bike has 3,577 miles on it after a year or four months of owning it. Um, so I put, you know, almost close to 4,000 miles on it. And believe it or not, um, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but... Uh, it has uh, Diablo Super Courses on it, and believe it or not, the tread is actually really good on it. It has, um, I would say, half half tread life. Oh, believe it or not, I, mean, I was uh, very shocked to see that. You might be able to see it better um, up here, but it's got quite a bit of life left on it. Now, I'm sure if you're watching this video, you've noticed a set of tires sitting here, and these are the Pirelli Diablo Rosso Corsa 2s with the 120 in the front and then the... Uh, 200 in the back. Um, I bought these um, just because I was I had some Rebzilla cash and they had some a good deal on this tire. But there's specifically why I bought this is because my XSR. I'm on my second set of these, and they are phenomenal. And I've talked about this tire before, but just real quick, highly recommend them. They're cheaper than the Super Corsas. They heat up faster, and they grip. I think just as good as those Super Corsas. Um, but again, so some of the bad things. Um, on this left foot peg, if you look carefully, I cleaned it up a little bit, but if you look carefully, you'll see a uh, little black crud inside these uh, ridges. That's actually the bottom of my shoe, the rubber off the bottom of my shoe. This exhaust here gets so hot that it actually melted part of my shoe. And last, this happened last summer. And um, 
some of the rubber actually got stuck in there. So I had to use some uh, cleaner to get it out. But uh, last weekend, I rode this bike to Washington, D.C. from here, which was about 634 miles, I think, round trip I ended up doing. And uh, it melted a little bit in my shoe again. So if you ride this bike and you have anything that um, shows your ankle or heat can get up underneath your pants and get to your ankle, I promise you um, it's going to be bad. That thing gets freaking hot. Um, especially if you just have jeans on, uh, you'll feel it through your jeans. So good riding pants, highly recommend it. The other place you're going to feel it is when it comes out from where the suspension is in the uh, clip-ons. And on the side over here, but on the other side, on the right side more so, I think the fan, when it comes up, blows all that heat up and it goes right up on your hand, on your right hand, your throttle hand. And that wind air comes up and it gets pretty hot, especially if you decide to not wear gloves. Wear gloves, highly recommended, please wear gloves. But if you decide to not wear them, your hand's gonna get pretty hot, especially in the summertime. So back to this weekend, uh, we rode it to DC um some of my other friends came with me and so i took this bike and when we were in dc it was pretty hot i would say it was in the low to mid 80s and this bike was running around on the streets of dc which as you all know is always congested it's just ridiculous it's almost like a parking lot the bike actually got up to 241 degrees and the warning light came on and the temperature started flashing so i got really nervous that i'm going to damage something or overheat the engine so I shut the bike off and for about, I don't know, 10 minutes, took a few photos and started back up and we got on the road and started moving. But if you let this bike sit in idling or in traffic and it's a nice summer day, like if you live out west or in Florida or any place like that where it gets really hot, I don't recommend sitting with this thing very long in traffic. Um, the warning light came on. That's the first time I've had that happen. Uh, almost got up that hot, but 241 degrees is what I saw on the temperature gauge when the warning light came on and started flashing. So that's another thing. It, it gets really hot. And I'm sure the new ones do too with all that fairing. Uh, one of my friends that has a Tuono, 2020 Tuono, and he rode with, to DC with us last weekend and he didn't have that problem. But of course, he, you know, he doesn't have the side fairing, so he gets some good crosswind. Um, so there's that. Now let's talk about another bad thing. Uh, so this thing is not comfortable at all. Let me just tell you straight up, it is not comfortable. Uh, but it's not built for comfort, it's built for a racetrack. It's built to be sliding around on the seat and jumping up and jumping down, you know, just constantly moving around. And when you're on the racetrack for 20, 30 minutes at a time, that's fine. But the way I took it to DC, I mean, we left at, uh, I don't know, 6.30 in the morning and got home at 9.30 at night and put 600 and some miles on it. Of course, you know, lunch and stopping for gas and things like that, but it was an all day ride and it was not very comfortable. Now, we took mostly back roads. We tried to stay off the interstate, so it wasn't so bad on the back roads because in when you take turns and whatnot and you're going through little towns and stopping at stoplights, you're at least moving around. But if you're just cruising on the interstate, uh, this thing is terrible. All your weight is on your wrists, your neck, uh, your shoulders, your butt is sore, your, you know, your knees are jacked up like a pretzel. Um, not comfortable at all. If you're looking at this bike and you want to take it to the track, yes, get it. But if you just want to drive it um, around town, it's probably okay, you know, because you're not going to be on it long. But I definitely don't recommend long trips with this thing. Um, you're not going to be very happy with it. I would suggest getting a Tuono. At least you're a little bit more comfortable. But... <clears throat> All that uh, being said, it's an excellent machine, and I don't regret it at all. Um, I'm glad I was put into a little bit of discomfort because the fun factor of the trip uh, outweighed the discomfort level. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about something else. This happened to me a couple of weeks ago, and if this ever happened to you or you know somebody that's happened to, let me know. <clears throat> so Aprilia will tell you that after you get done riding a bike, you need to crack the gas tank and leave it cracked open so the fumes come out. Apparently there's something with the gas tank where it doesn't vent out fumes and there's a lot of pressure that builds up and it can actually crack the gas tank. And this, this is just the cover. The tank is actually under this. This is some sort of, I don't know, aluminum or I don't know what it's made of, but it's just the cover. The actual gas tank is made of some sort of a carbon resin material. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Uh, 
but it builds up a lot of pressure. So you're supposed to crack the gas tank and leave it cracked for a little while, at least until it cools off. And even just sitting out here, every so often, uh, I come out here and crack it, and you can hear the pressure come out of the gas tank. Um, but one really strange thing happened. So a few weeks ago, uh, I, I took the bike out for, I don't know, about 30, 45 minutes, just, you know, goofing around. I came back, and it was a pretty hot day. I'd say it was about 80 degrees. And I came back, and I pulled up in the driveway, and I cracked the gas tank open. You know, I heard the, the fumes vent out, and it just let out a hiss. And it just let all the fumes out. So I shut it back. I put the key back in the uh, ignition, and I put the bike back in its place where I normally store it, right here in the garage. And then I hear, uh, you know, I'm cleaning my helmet off from the bug guts and things like that, and I hear this, what sounds like this little uh, whining motor, a uh, little electric motor. It would make this buzzing sound for, I don't know, a few seconds, and then it would go off. And keep, come on and go off, come on and go off. And I didn't know what it was coming from, and I stuck my ear up to the motorcycle, and it sounded like there's something inside, like at the top of the engine, making a noise. And I'm like, what is that? So for some reason, uh, I decided to take the key and crack the gas tank open. And when I did, a big gush of uh, pressure came out again, and I heard this gurgling. It almost sounded like you're like boiling water on your stove, like when you're boiling eggs or something. That's exactly what it sounded like. So I'm like, what the heck is that? And I cracked the uh, top of the nozzle open, and what do you know? My gas inside my gas tank, because I had just filled up right before I came back to the house, the gas inside the gas tank is bubbling like water on your stove when you're boiling water. It was that bad. It was literally, it looked like my gas was boiling. And I freaked out. I didn't know what the heck was going on. I was about ready to push this thing out in the driveway in case it blows up or catches on fire or something. So I call Aprilia and they tell me that uh, there's some sort of a, a motor on there that's supposed to vent out the fumes. And that, that hissing sound or buzzing sound that I heard was that little motor that was trying to vent the fumes out, but it, it can't keep up and it builds up a lot of pressure and that's why your gas tank will crack. So they said that's totally okay and it's just the air going back in through the gas tank uh, where it's trying to vent the fumes out. So they told me, Aprilia told me to always crack the tank and leave it cracked at least until the engine cools off. So I didn't believe it. So just for uh, a peace of mind, I called two more Aprilia dealers and they told me the exact same thing. And um, this was uh, the service department, the mechanics that told me this. So I feel more comfortable with it, but it's, uh, just keep in mind that that's another issue with this bike. I've never had this happen. He says that the Yamahas do this, the R1s, but I've had uh, an R1 and it didn't do this. I've had CBR, it didn't do this. So it's just really weird. Um, Another bad thing is these warning labels. You know, there's like 16 different labels on this thing to tell you how you're going to die and don't do X or you're going to die, pretty much. Um, these things are put on with some sort of glue that I don't know where the Italians got this glue from, but I need some of it because these stickers aren't going anywhere. Uh, so I started trying to peel them uh, right here and it just kind of cracks and breaks up. It won't come off. This would take me two years to get the sticker off if I tried to just peel it. So I tried the old um, hair dryer method. And on my XSR 900, I just heated the sticker and it came off in one piece. Just heated the glue, came right off, cleaned off any residual glue, and it was fine. This one, I mean, I tried heating it and heating it, and there was actually, I think, one on this side. I think that's where I got it from. I finally managed to get one of them off. But it takes forever to just get one sticker off. So my next video, I'm going to try to demonstrate that. If, so if you're interested, stay tuned. I'll make that video. But it is an absolute nightmare to get these stickers off. And uh, finally, um, I think the only thing that I would say is a, another negative about this bike, uh, one that I can think of and sticks out of my head, is just changing the oil on it. Um, I made a video on how to change the oil on it, but... Just getting that plastic off on the other side, on the right-hand side, is just kind of a disaster. I mean, once you take it off a couple times, you kind of figure it out and it's, it's not that bad. But just to get an oil filter and a drain plug off, you have to go through this whole shindig of getting all, these, uh, all this plastic off. But that's, you know, that's the cost of owning a sport bike. Uh, when you buy a sport bike, you know that that's what's going to happen. Because the naked bikes obviously don't have that issue. So if you buy a sport bike, whether it's this or an R1 or CBR, just keep in mind, taking a plastic off just to do anything on it is a disaster. Um, it's just, 
a pain in the ass, pretty much what it is. Um, and that, that, that about sums it up. Um, obviously, the comfort is the biggest thing, but that's the choice that you have to make about the comfort because, yes, the bike is amazing and it's really fun to ride, uh, but is it worth it for you to be uncomfortable? Uh, for me, yes, it is, but probably not a whole lot longer. You know, I'm in my mid-40s, so this bike is not exactly made for me. It's probably made for somebody 20, you know, early 20s or something like that. Uh, someone that's a little bit more flexible and uh, the pains uh, being, you know, in your 40s aren't there. Um, but is it still fun? Yes, absolutely. And do I overlook the discomfort? Yes. And I've proven that this past weekend when we went to D.C. Um, so overall, the, the bike is amazing. The other one complaint that I, I just thought of is, um, and I'm sorry for not mentioning this before, but is the quick shifter. The quick shifter on this thing, if you're on the gas and you're on it uh, at a decent amount and you're giving it quite a bit of throttle, I'd say probably quarter to one third throttle. The um, quick shifter is pretty smooth going up and then you have to let completely off the gas and it's uh, pretty smooth coming down. However, if you're not high enough in the RPM or you're not on the gas high enough, it's very, very clunky. Uh, so you pretty much, I would suggest, don't use the quick shifter unless you're at least 5,000 RPM and on the gas, and then you can bump it and it's fine. Uh, same thing for coming down, make sure you're at a higher RPM. Don't try to come all the way down to like 4,000 and then go down to the next gear. Uh, come down in a higher gear um, and it'll be smooth. But that quick shifter is not what the moto journalist described it on all the videos I watched prior to buying this bike. It is smooth. But what they failed to mention is that you need to be higher up in the RPM and you need to be on the gas. Same thing when you're coming down. Just be up, be over 5,000 RPM and then you should be okay. But overall, that about sums up the bike. Uh, again, those tires are the next ones going on, but uh, I'm going to try to wear out those uh, super courses and see what we can do with those because uh, they got pretty good life. And I'm very surprised, by the way, because I've heard they were about a 1,500 mile uh, tire, but right now I got 3,500, almost 36, and I'd say they're about half-life, so uh, pretty amazing. Um, I totally did not expect that. So anyway, that wraps up this video, and hey, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below, and thank you for watching, and if you like the video and you want to see more, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Um, it would help me out a lot, but uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.